no X. Why? Precisely. Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. You know, I wasn't quite sure what video I was going to bring to you guys today. Uh, I had originally wanted to do a Backtracks this weekend, but I am uh, way far behind in getting the notes to Backtracks done, so that's obviously not happening this weekend, hopefully next weekend. Uh, but then I remembered, and I think I mentioned it in my uh, live stream last weekend, that I hadn't quite gotten finished with, I hadn't done the final chapter of my A to Z thing that I was supposed to get all done within the last calendar year. So I decided what better uh, occasion than to do that and to get that out of the way to get that taken care of. I don't like to leave things unfinished uh, when it comes to my channel. Uh, yes, there are things that I've said I was going to start, uh, you know, earlier on in the course of my channel, but this was one that was well underway and it fell by the wayside uh, toward the end of 2020 and just I just didn't get it done, but I decided to go ahead and finish it up. Uh, it doesn't take that much prep, not nearly as much prep as Backtracks, but uh, yes, uh, my A to Z feature uh, to get it uh, out of the way here is my, well, it was supposed to be monthly, that's what it was originally, uh, alphabetical exploration of what was in last year's uh, cycle of A to Z was the $1 LP section at House of Records, a local store in the Eugene area. They have a whole big section of $1 LPs, and I just decided back in January of last year, you know, it would be fun to just pick one album by one artist, beginning with each letter of the alphabet. Uh, so from A to Z, and uh, I left out two letters of the alphabet, uh, mainly because I couldn't find albums by artists beginning with the letters X and Y. So it worked out to 24 albums, two albums per month, would work, work out perfectly in a 12-month cycle. And so, yes, uh, beside the fact that I didn't quite uh, stick with the schedule, here I am finishing it up. And so, yes, the last four letters, which I didn't get to, I left off with the letter T in the last video. So yes, today we'll be, we will be covering the letters U, V, W, and Z. So starting out with the letter U, representing that letter in this year's cycle of Tom's A to Z, is Uriah Heep. This is their best of album, released in 1976. And yes, Uriah Heep is pretty well known in the music world, in the world of, world of classic rock. I had never checked them out until... A to Z gave me an opportunity to do so. And uh, yeah, it, this is a pretty decent collection, I have to say. Uh, I have been, that was one of the things, the impetus, impeti, impetuses of getting this channel going in the first place was to explore classic music, music from before I was born, or before I got into music at least. And it was something that I just completely neglected until I started this channel. And uh, yeah, the Backtracks is the main vehicle for doing that. But A to Z has worked out uh, pretty well in uh, covering that ground as well. And yes, Uriah Heep was just one of those big classic rock acts that I never had an excuse to try out until now. And as I said, yeah, this is a pretty darn good collection. It's making me want to explore them further. This collection spans their first eight albums, approximately. And uh, for those of you who may not be uh, aware of or be into Uriah Heep, uh, basically most of this album is blues rock, uh, kind of in the vague neighborhood of Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, that kind of thing. Uh, the one big standout here is a song called July Morning, which is over 10 minutes long. It's it's kind of progish in a way. So so this the the band kind of dips into prog in uh, certain ranges of their of their life of their uh, career. And yes, that takes up basically the first half of side two is the song July Morning. And I guess it's one of their most well known uh, songs uh, from what I read up on on the internet. But yes, uh, side A includes the songs Easy Living and Bird of Prey. Those are two other two really good standout tracks, and I think I'm going to need to check out their Demons and Wizards album because those two tracks come from that album. And But yeah, this is, as I keep saying, uh, it's very, very enjoyable stuff. I might not have been into this a few years ago back when I started my channel, but yeah, I've started getting a bit more of an, an appetite, I guess you'd say, for classic rock, uh, blues rock to some degree, but yeah, I've gotten into Zeppelin thanks to this channel. I've never really checked out Deep Purple. I need to do that as well. So, uh, but yeah, that was just, I included Deep Purple in the comparisons just because that's what I read online. So full disclosure, I, I, I cribbed those notes, I guess you'd say. But yeah, I'm, I, I'm very much looking forward to checking out Uriah Heep in more depth. Uh, definitely going to start with that Demons and Wizards album. And if anybody out there is a Uriah Heep fan and uh, you have recommendations for really good albums for, for a beginner, you know, somebody just getting into Uriah Heep, drop them in the comments. Let me know because I'm, I'm really kind of interested. So yeah, 
Very, very good addition, a good installment in my HZ series from last year. One of the standouts, I gotta say. Okay, next up, representing the letter V, is an artist that I'm probably not going to have much to say about, uh, at least not this album, and not through any fault of the artist. But uh, yes, it is Jerry Vale and his uh, album, his 1970 album, Let It Be. And yes, Jerry Vale is a pop singer, for those of you who don't know, very much in the vein of Andy Williams, Neil Sedaka, those kind of guys, you know, the, the, the easy listening pop standards kind of guys. Um, this album, as kind of hinted at by the title, Let It Be, uh, covers contemporary hit singles, uh, hit songs by other artists in the, you know, the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, the title track, obviously, is uh, the, the cover of the Beatles song, Let It Be. Uh, he also takes, takes on uh, Bridge Over Troubled Water, the Simon and Garfunkel classic, uh, Leaving on a Jet Plane, which was written by John Denver, uh, but uh, made more famous by the recording by Peter, Paul, and Mary, um, and as, as well as a pair of uh, Burt Backrack and Hal David tunes, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, uh, originally made famous by B.J. Thomas, and I'll Never Fall in Love Again, which was recorded by Dionne Warwick. She made it a very, very popular song, one of her more popular songs in her catalog. So yeah, and I've got to say, most of the renditions on this album are pretty darn good, and there are actually a couple of songs that uh, I was not really aware of. Uh, the song Easy Come, Easy Go, I, th I think that was made a hit by somebody else, as were most of the songs on this album. And uh, Stay a While, I don't remember, uh, that one didn't sound familiar to me, and neither did the song Jean, which closes out side one. So yeah, a pretty a pretty decent, you know, as far as, you know, the easy listening song uh, albums go. This is a pretty darn decent, pretty pleasant album. Nothing revelatory or earth-shattering in the world of music, honestly, which, you know, these sorts of albums never really are. But yeah, I might check out Jerry Vale at some point in the future. Uh, he certainly has a huge, long list of albums to choose from. I mean, his discography just goes on for miles. So, uh, but yeah, I can see kind of why he, you know, made a career out of singing, because he is pretty good at it, gotta say. And approaching the end of the alphabet, we come to the letter W, and W in this case stands for Sadao Watanabe. And he is a Japanese jazz saxophonist. And I, I was vaguely aware of his existence. I mean, I'd heard the name Sadao Watanabe before, but had never checked out his stuff. And uh, yes, he has been recording since 1961. And believe it or not, he is still at it even at the ripe old age of 87 years old. And I gotta say, this is pretty good. I was kind of expecting something a little bit different, uh, just because I know he had been around for quite a while. And also, I mean, this album, incidentally, is from uh, 1981. It's called Orange Express. Uh, Dave Grusin actually arranges nearly all the songs on here, I think all the songs on here, and also plays piano and keyboards on nearly all the tracks, uh, piano, keyboard, synthesizers, that kind of thing. And uh, to my surprise, I didn't know until after I was listening to this and reading the liner notes that George Benson, one of my favorite jazz musicians, plays guitar on the title track. So there you have it, just an extra little icing on the cake for me for this album. But uh, yeah, I, I was saying a few minutes ago, I was kind of a little bit surprised at the album's sound. Being Japanese, I was just kind of, for some reason, was expecting a little bit more Eastern sounding stuff. So, you know, that took me by a little surprise. I wasn't disappointed, though. Uh, this is pretty good stuff. Uh, side A is, uh, actually, you know, all the tracks on Side A are the more Western sounding, straight ahead jazz fusion stuff. And they were all, all those tracks were written by Sadao Watanabe himself. So, yeah, a good composer, great saxophonist. Uh, an excellent album. I mean, the inst the the uh, performances, instrumentation per performances, are just top top flight, first rate on here. And um, side two actually does take on a little bit more of an ethnic vibe, but mostly African sounds. Strangely enough, I would have expected again. I would have expected you know Japanese or Asian influences rather than African, but nothing wrong there. He tackles African influences uh, very authentically. I thought, and uh, yeah. But to the extent that they are offered in this album. We don't get, like, immersed in African-esque sounds, but just a couple of the songs are based on African folk songs and that kind of thing. So, But yeah, as far as jazz fusion, if you have not checked out Sadao Watanabe, if you are a jazz fusion fan, I recommend him. And uh, yeah, this is just as good a place as any to start, I think. And as, yeah, as I said, I think I said, this was my first album exposure to Sadao Watanabe, and I am not going to stop here. I'm going to check out his other stuff. Uh, see how good it is compared to this. But yeah, good, good stuff. And now, sadly, yes, bittersweet occasion, we have arrived at the end of the alphabet. And yes, uh, for those of you who paid attention in school, you know what letter is coming up. It is the letter Z, and uh, or, or Z for my Canadian viewers out there. Yes, I try to give my Canadian viewers a shout out whenever I can. 
But yes, the letter Z or Z in this case represents Dweezil Zappa. And yes, uh, th this is, by the way, his sophomore album, My Guitar Wants to Kill Your Mama, released in 1988. And yes, he is the son of Frank Zappa, and yes, he covers his father's song and borrows its title for the title of this album. But that's pretty much where the similarities end. Don't let those things fool you, because this is pretty much straightforward guitar-based rock, uh, without the avant-garde beat changes and genre switch-up uh, that uh, his father's music was well known for. Uh, now, the, the lyrics, though, are somewhat uh, uncomplicated. Yeah, let, let's go with that word, uncomplicated. Uh, but Dweezil Zappa's guitar work is phenomenal. It is fantastic. I mean, if you're anything like me, when you once you listen to this album, it'll leave you wondering why he isn't ranked up there with Satriani and Sambora as one of the best rock guitarists out there today. Truly, I am truly at a loss as to why he is not more well-known for his guitar work. I mean, I think he's just, you know in the shadow of his father i mean how can you how can you not be with a name like zappa but uh, yeah he, he deserves recognition all on his own for his own stuff this was only a sophomore album remember so he was still developing his his uh, stuff and i i do have one other album a later album on cd i have not listened to it in quite a while that's one of the many cds in my library that i've neglected uh, vocally he's he's good vocally not fantastic and yeah the lyrics as i said you know, but yeah instrumentally this album is top-notch. It's just fantastic. The track Shameless uh, was, was pretty good. It was one of the better written songs. You know, it has some uh, titles in here like The Coolest Guy in the World, which the, the, the title makes it sound a little more pedestrian than, than it actually is. Um, Bang Your Groove Thang is, is, is not bad. It's just a fun party song. Doesn't isn't meant to be taken you know with any weight at all. And uh, Her Eyes Don't Follow Me, that was actually a pretty good one too. So yeah. But yeah, as I said, do not be afraid to try this album out if, if you have, especially if you have, are familiar with Frank Zappa but have not experienced anything of, of Dweezil's catalog. Uh, yeah, this would uh, be a fine enough place to start. And yeah, I'm happy, I'm very happy I picked up this album. Very, very good. Well, I've got to say that was a pretty darn fun inaugural cycle of Tom's A to Z. I ran across a handful of new artists I hadn't known about before, and yeah, I'm glad I thought about that uh, feature. I came up with that back in January of last year. Uh, I won't be doing an A to Z for 2021. Uh, I, I had too many monthly features going on, that's why I kind of fell behind with A to Z last year. But uh, yeah, I'll probably revive the feature in 2022 since Bargain Bag is coming to an end this year. Uh, so, But before I leave, I thought I would do something a little fun to give a proper wrap-up and close-out to A to Z, and that is to rank my 10 favorite A to Z albums from this cycle. Uh, obviously, if I had finished A to Z on time, I would have included this countdown list in my year-end spectacular-ish, but, well, you know what happened. So yes, I thought I would just quickly run them down because I do talk about each album at length in its respective A to Z video, which you can find in the A to Z playlist on my YouTube channel's homepage. So go ahead and look at those for details. But yes, I thought I'd rank my top ten along with an honorable mention. So first off with the honorable mention, it is an artist named 2020 and their album Lookout. This is their sophomore album. This was a, a rock, uh, power pop slash new wave band out of Oklahoma. A good set of songs on here, nice catchy stuff. So uh, yeah, give them a try if you haven't yet. They're pretty much uh, unknown, at least I had never heard of them, even though they this album was put out on a major label. So yeah, good stuff. Number 10 in my countdown is Rocky Burnett. This was all the way back at the beginning of last year uh, in January. Yes, his album the son of rock and roll, and this album, this the title is taken quite literally. He is the son of a famous uh, rock figure from years past. Yeah, good stuff. And as the title also uh, hints at, this is rock and roll, pretty much good old time rock and roll. This was done in the uh, 1980. It was released in 1980. So yeah, good stuff on here. Number nine, we have the album Indian Summer by Poco, and Poco is what probably one of the more well known bands in that I covered in A to Z over the last year. I had never checked out, checked out any of their albums. Kind of a good uh, um, Tex-Mex, a, little, uh, a little, you know, rock with a little bit of Tex-Mex in it. And this, this was a good album. Yeah, very, very good stuff, gotta say. Number eight is one that will look very familiar. It is Sadao Watanabe, the one that I just talked about a few minutes ago. Uh, yeah, I just, for some reason, it's, you know, the, the jazz may sound kind of ordinary, run-of-the-mill, but still, it, it's fun. It's, I, I like that kind of music just for kind of good, relaxing background music but with a little bit of energy in it you know kind of elevates my mood when i listen to it number seven is one of the older 
uh, albums in my countdown. I can't see a copyright date on here, but it is Los Indos Tabajadas with their album, Their Very Special Touch. And this is basically um, easy listening and uh, f uh, pop hits that were done in their kind of Spanish guitar style. Good stuff. Nice, nice moody stuff. Very, very good renditions of, um, you know, popular gringo popular songs done in a in a spanish style so yeah very very nice stuff i'm going to look for some of their other stuff i haven't had a chance to do that yet and uh, number six is the best of uriah heap i just talked about that one great great classic rock very very good stuff number five is quarter flash with their album back into blue this is their, their third album and yeah this is i'm an 80s kid so that's why this one ranks where it does at number five uh, good stuff, yeah. And not as good as their first two albums, but still a, a worthy addition to their catalog and to my uh, LP collection as well. And coming in at number four here, we have uh, another dose of world music, uh, but from a different part of the world than Los Indos Tabajas, the more Latin stuff. This is a band called Kasav, and uh, this, this is their album Vinnie Pooh. And Kasav is basically a Caribbean band. They do the, the genres of soca and zouk music. They're uh, some of the more lesser known genres in the Caribbean family of genres of music. Uh, and, you know, not as out there as reggae is in the, you know, in, in the culture, in Western culture, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so these are the more obscure sounds of Caribbean music, but very good stuff to listen to. If you're in a, in a mood to explore Caribbean music, I had never checked this kind of stuff out before and was pretty satisfied with my first taste of it. So yeah, good stuff. Then we have, for number three, uh, another one that was toward the beginning of the year of A to Z. This is Terry Lynn Carrington with her album Real Life Story. And the thing that makes this remarkable that really made it stick in my head is that uh, Terry Lynn Carrington is a female drummer of color. So yeah, n you know, not very many, very, very few female drummers at all. And, you know, probably even fewer female drummers of color. So yeah, that was, uh, you know, just, and, you know, even fewer still that actually headline their own albums. So yeah, uh, very, very good stuff. Lots of jazz uh, luminaries guesting, you know, on the other instruments on the album. But yeah, this is a very, very solid set. This is a great album. Uh, if you like drumming, if, if you pay attention to drums and you have not checked out Terry Lynn Carrington, uh, she is not one to ignore in, in not even in just in the jazz gen genre in general. So yeah, very good stuff. Very worthy of your time. Okay, now my runner-up on this list might leave some of you guys shaking your heads just because when I was talking about it a few minutes ago, it made it sound kind of lackluster, so you'll probably be really surprised as to why I put this one so high up on the list. But honestly, at the end of the day, when I finished sorting out the list, that's just where this one fell. I just, I, I liked it maybe more than the way I was talking about it a few minutes ago. Let on, it is Dweezil Zappa with uh, My Guitar Wants to Kill Your Mama. Yeah, it's just, you know, the, yes, the lyrics are just kind of underwhelming, but the rest of it, especially Zappa, as I just said, Zappa's guitar work is just phenomenal on here. So yeah, it's uh, I, it, to me it earns its place at uh, number two, probably because I'm I'm just I think maybe it's just his charm I guess more than anything else that uh, and his guitar work as I said that really made it uh, launch it up to number two in my list. But number one, my favorite A to Z album of 2020 has got to be. Trini Lopez, and some of you guys might have seen this one coming. I've talked up Trini Lopez several times since I did this album in the middle of last year. I've got, what, three more of his albums since this one. This was my first introduction to Trini Lopez. It's fantastic. He's just got a great, a great, great voice. Just has a lot of, a lot of resonance to us, to it, uh, you know, just has a, a great timbre to, to his voice. And of course, his guitar work is just excellent as well. So yeah, lots of fun folk songs, uh, traditional folk songs and standards on this album. That's just, you know, it, like I said, it made me get three more albums of his stuff. So, uh, and I, I don't think I'm stopping there either. So yes, uh, Trini Lopez very much earns the number one spot on my favorite A to Z albums list of 2020. Okay, so that'll do it for Tom's A to Z for 2020. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, that feature coming back probably in 2022. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.